I'm Bill Sarur from Dev Mastery, and welcome to the very first episode of Mastery Monday. This is a live show on YouTube where I try to help you improve your code and advance your career. So today for the very first episode, I've got something interesting planned. We're going to be talking about the number one way to improve your code. And so for me, what I've found over my 20 plus year career is that the number one way to improve your code is to adopt a mindset of first make it work, then make it better. And I know that sounds a little bit cheesy and it sounds maybe like it should be on a poster. In fact, that's the kind of thing that uh, that I discovered when I was trying to figure out who said this first. So I'm pretty sure I'm not the first person who ever said, um, you know, first make it work, then make it better. Uh, so I was on Google and I was looking for, okay, who, who came up with this phrase? And uh, it turns out, yeah, uh, it's a motivational poster. You can buy it from Etsy. Um, but the reality is there's actually a lot of wisdom in this idea of first make it work, then make it better. So if you'll stick with me, I'll explain why I think that that's the number one way to improve your code and exactly how to implement uh, this idea. And then um, if there's some people around, we can definitely uh, have a chat and take some questions and uh, and go from there. So, all right. Um, basically, I think there are two um, main mistakes that lead to bad code. So the first thing uh, is shipping the first thing that works. And the second mistake is um, making it better before making it work. So let me explain. So when I say shipping the first thing that works, I think if you've had uh, uh, any experience writing code, you know that your first solution is not always going to be your best solution in terms of clean code, quality code. You've probably experienced where um, you ship some code and then the next day or the next week, you kind of have an insight and go, oh, yeah, I should have done it this way. Um, and so it's very rare that um, uh, the first thing you come up with is the best code. And so that's one of the mistakes that leads to bad code. I think uh, when we're first starting out, often we just we're happy that we got something to work and then off it goes and we don't bother uh, to refactor or to improve it. So the second mistake that I think leads to bad code is uh, trying to make it better before making it work. And what I mean by that is um, it sort of manifests itself in two ways. So one is you get in your head. So you try to design the perfect thing uh, in your own mind before ever implementing anything. And that usually happens after you've been bitten by the first mistake a few times. You realize, oh, if I had just thought about this more, maybe I would have had that insight before I had to um, actually write or ship the code. And so you go in your head and you try to come up with the absolute perfect design before you've uh, put any hands on keyboards and before you've implemented anything. And what can happen there is you can drive yourself into a sort of uh, analysis paralysis. And you're never going to um, have perfect information or you're never going to know what you don't know until you actually start uh, trying to implement something. So being in your head the whole time uh, is not as helpful as actually starting and trying to make something work first. The other way that this mistake uh, kind of manifests itself is um, you prematurely generalize or prematurely um, abstract things out. So for example, you know, your, your client tells you, okay, build uh, build me a screen where I can add uh, products to a catalog and you think, okay, well, so I have to add products to a catalog. So that means I probably have to interact with the database. So that means I need some kind of database interaction layer. And next thing you know, you're writing your own custom database interaction framework and you're giving it all kinds of bells and whistles, etc. And then it's like the day before the deadline and you haven't even started uh, on the, the adding product screen because you've been so focused on, uh, on building this abstraction because you feel like you're really going to need that and it's super important and then you rush uh, the last bit and your abstraction is probably wrong because uh, you did it before you had any real uh, use for it besides one use case which you hadn't even uh, coded yet. So I really think um, adopting that mindset of first make it work then make it better is actually going to save you from these two really really common mistakes. And so two questions sort of come up. The first is um, how do we know our code works? So if we say, okay, first make it work, well, what does work mean? And how do we know that the code is actually working? And I think that the best way to know that your code works, in fact, probably the only way to know that your code works is to test it, right? You're going to try it out. And so you have two options there. You can either uh, test it manually, just run through the scenario, or you can uh, automate the test. And I would say to you, if you automate the test, uh, chances are you're going to be in a much better position because uh, with an automated test, you're going to end up going a lot faster and you're going to be able to refactor and improve your code uh, more quickly because you won't have to worry about manually stepping through uh, and ensuring that you haven't uh, broken anything. 
And so then the next uh, question is, like, how do we make working code better? Okay, so you've got a test, you're running the test, the test is passing, so you know that your code works. So what do we mean by better and how do we make code better? So that's gonna be really uh, one of the main topics of this show. So why I'm doing this Mastery Monday show every Monday at 10 p.m. live is so that we can talk about all of the various ways that we can actually um, improve your code, make it better. But for now, I'll just give you some general advice. So generally speaking, um, code is better when it's easy to change, or more specifically, when you can change the code without breaking things. So the worst kind of code is code where um, as the second you touch it, you break your entire app. So your goal in making the code better is trying to make it easier to change. And so you can imagine there's a whole bunch of things that go into that. So, you know, if it's more readable, uh, it's easier to understand, then it's gonna be easier to change. If it's more independent, um, it's also gonna be easier to change without uh, breaking things. And obviously if you have a good uh, set of tests around it, it's gonna be easier to change without breaking things. So that's what we mean when we talk about making it better in general. Uh, for specifics, I'd love you to tune in next Monday and uh, uh, the following Mondays after that, because we're gonna be getting into a lot more uh, specific examples of how to take working code and improve it and make it better. I'm gonna show you lots of tips uh, and tricks as time goes on. But for now, uh, let's talk about uh, how would we apply this idea of first make it work, then make it better in real life? So um, the way I do it and the way that I recommend you try is you first need to write a test that describes the behavior from the point of view of the end user of your code. And the end user of your code might be like an actual end user of the application or it might be another developer. It just depends on what what type of code you're writing. So if you're writing an API versus, you know, creating the front end or creating some kind of a, a, a web interface. Um, so, but you, the, the point is you need to write an automated test and you should write it from the, the point of view or from the perspective of your end user. And that test should um, describe the behavior of your code. So one of the things that I hear and I see often is developers are not sure exactly how to go about writing a test until they've actually uh, created the code that they're trying to test because they need to understand, sorry, they need to understand the implementation uh, in order to be able to test it. And that's because you're testing the wrong thing. So what you wanna be testing is you wanna be testing the behavior of your code. So what the code does versus how it does it. Uh, and again, in future episodes, I'll go into uh, pretty deep into actually testing and, and how to write that kind of test. But the point is in real life, the first thing you should have in your back pocket is a test that sort of proves that your code works. So an automated test that describes the behavior from the point of view of the user, so you can know with confidence uh, when the code is working and when you've broken it. The next thing you wanna do is hack your way to green. So you wanna get to a passing test as quickly as possible. And when I say hack, I mean like, you can break any rule you want, copy paste from Stack Overflow, uh, you know, pull stuff out of docs, whatever you need to do uh, in order to get your code to pass the test as quickly as possible, that's what you should do. And once you have working, uh, working code, it's not good code yet, but it's working code, then you can check that into your repository and you now have a fallback position, a fail safe. And so what that does for you is it gives you sort of mentally, it's a little bit of space because, you know, in the real world, you're going to be working against deadlines. You're going to want to make things perfect. You're not going to have time to make things perfect. And you're definitely not going to be in a mode to uh, think of or come up with or implement the best solution. If you're under a tremendous amount of pressure, you've got a deadline looming uh, and you've just got to get the thing out the door. But if you've got a passing test, if you have code that works, it may not be great, but you've got code that works and it's checked in, that frees you takes away a little bit of stress. And now you've got time to go in and try to refactor that code and improve that code. And you've got the test at your back that's gonna tell you when you've broken something so you can get that back to green with a little bit better version, check it in, get it back to green with a little bit better version, check it in, and keep iterating like that until um, your deadline hits. And even in this case, if you have a really tight deadline and you've shipped something that's really suboptimal, you can go back when there's some downtime because you've got that test at your back, you can go back and uh, try to improve it, make it better and refactor even um, after you've shipped the initial, the initial version. So that's the idea, you refactor, uh, that's the third step, you refactor, uh, you ship, 
And then after that, you refactor some more until you've got a really uh, clean code that you're proud of, that you're happy with. And so um, one of the resources that I can recommend that you check out if you're interested in uh, you know, what I mean by refactor, uh, there's refactoring.com, which is something that's put out by a very well-known developer, Martin Fowler. And he's got there a whole uh, list and with examples of different refactorings that you can do. And we'll also be covering some of those in future episodes uh, here on Mastery Mondays, uh, Mondays at 10 p.m. So that's really what I wanted to talk about today is the number one way to improve your code, which, like I said, is you first make it work, then make it better. 